okay. Several people talked about um, semiotics in their discussion posts, and I wanted to clarify some things and help you understand it better. So semiotics is a system of signs and symbols. It's a way of interpreting what we see, not from a physiological or psychological or um, any other uh, biological way, but from the terms of perception. And so we begin with the theory, and theory is simply anything that tries to explain a phenomenon or something um, that we don't understand. It begins with questions and hypotheses causal relationships. We have to have context and an approach and methods. So there's simply, theories are simply ways of people search for answers. Why do things happen the way they do? So the question that comes up in semiotics is, what does it mean to represent a place, a person, or a thing? How does that affect us? How do things like culture or ideology or norms, personal or social, contribute to the process of making sense of that image or the thing that we're looking at. Semiotics teaches us the importance of symbolism, and symbolism is really important in semiotics, and we'll get to that in a second. Um, it, semiotics is both a theory as well as a method for unpacking the meaning of an image, or a sign in this case. A sign is anything that stands for anything. So, um, for instance, a uh, wristwatch or a gesture is a sign. Um, letters are signs. The only time a sign is not a sign is when you don't know what it is. Um, there's a very famous um, movie called The Gods Must Be Crazy, and in it, the Bushmen in Africa, you know, the Aboriginal people, is walking along in the desert, and out of the nowhere, a Coke bottle comes and almost hits them in the head. And it's the Coke bottle is thrown out by a pilot, and he doesn't, he sees the airplanes, but he thinks of them as gods. So he didn't know what a Coke bottle was. So the sign from above, it was, it's very different for him. And they take it back, and they have all these different uses for this Coke bottle, and until chaos happens in the village. But so a sign is anything that stands for something else. Semiotics is a perceptual theory because it's concerned with interpretation and not necessarily the physiological or biological aspects of the process. It's not sensory. So there are two, two main thinkers, theorists, that came about in the late 19th century to introduce us to this idea of the relationship between ideas, language, and images. The first one is a linguist named Ferdinand de Saussure, and his um, theory is more um, used in literature rather than in, with images, but it, it does work as well. So semiotics um, originally was called semiology by Saussure and the science of signs. And everyone left to his own devices, formed an idea about what goes on in language, which is very far from the truth. We know that. Uh, René Magritte, a famous French painter, um, picked up on this idea later on and painted a, a surreal, he's a surrealist, so this is not a pipe, his painting challenges our perceptual process by acknowledging the arbitrary nature of assigning meanings to objects. So we see this image and we say, well, that's a tree, but how do we know it's a tree? It has to be a learned, constructed thing. So. It's a sign that's an object. In this case, it would be a photograph or a drawing. And um, we assign it with meanings. And this is the way that Saussure did it. Signification is the end result of two, two processes. One is a signified, the object, this, in this case of drawing. And the second is a signifier. That's what we call the object. So the relationship of the signified and the signifier is very important and the end result is signification. Signs convey and, and interpret messages and codes through a system of signs. The alphabet, Morse code, JavaScript, photographic images, these are all sign systems that we use. Now the other fellow, Charles Sanders Peirce, pronounced Peirce, the theorist, he's also a mathematician, he's a um, 
a language. He's a genius. He introduced this, this uh, theory of science, which is much more, um, well, at least in my field, more commonly used, called semiotics. Nothing is a sign unless it's interpreted as a sign. So the meaning behind any sign must be learned. Signs permeate all languages, verbal or visual. So Peirce came up with this idea that there's three elements with three working parts to this process of understanding the meaning of, of messages or visual messages. And he talks about it in terms of the triad. And the triad is the icon, the index, and the symbol. And then we'll dis discuss that really quickly. First off, an icon refers to the actual thing that's represented, a photograph, a movie frame, a painting, a penny. Um, so that's an icon. It's not what we think of like a movie star icon or an icon, a religious painting, in you know, some, some context. But this sense that icon is part of the triad. So this is always interesting to me. In the, in the 1960s, the 70s, a Pioneer spacecraft was um, went out to explore the, the galaxy and who knows where it is now. But it was um, sent out into the solar system and on it was a plaque of greetings to anybody that found, you know, any uh, extraterrestrial that might have found it. But how would they interpret this? So what are the signs? We recognize these signs, but how would they recognize these signs? And what were the scientists thinking that composed this message? This might help explain it too. The second characteristic of um, the triad of a sign is the index. So the index it indicates or points towards an actual imagined connection, in a sense connects to the symbol. There's a cause relationship between the icon and the index and the symbol, the three. So in this case, the smoking points towards a symbol, the skull and cross the skull, death. Pretty cool. I guess. Whatever. How about this one? And you see that this is a photograph of two swans. That's the icon. The index is them facing each other, right? But we see here in the negative space, we see what looks like a heart. And so the swans point towards a relationship between the swans. And we would connote, based on our own emotional reaction to this, love between these two swans. And that's the symbol that appears. Hope that's clear. So finally, a symbol is a sign that has to be learned within the culture. I have to be—I have to be taught that the White House is not just a building, but a symbol of power in the United States. Or, a Norman Rockwell's famous painting of um, the school integration, and there's lots of signs here: the rotten tomatoes, the graffiti on the wall. The young black girl in the white dress, really significant, and the white guards walking her in with the yellow marshals and the badges. And her, you know, just her posture um, with the ruler and her clean white sneakers, all of it exudes confidence and um, she's being guarded. So that's my, what well, would be my interpretation. So we have a um, you know, the interpretation of it would be the index, the, the, the elements in the frame point to a symbol, which is, um, you know, integration. Here's an image I made a few years ago of a powwow. I've always been fascinated by this because they're, um, you know, he's wearing an Indian's uh, baseball cap, not showing any favors. Um, However, he's also in the middle of this, you know, with his regalia, very traditional powwow ceremony. So he's making a statement here. So, in a sense, what does it point towards? And what is the symbol? So you have to, and that's why it's not a simple process. You know, everybody's interpretation of this would be very different. Yeah, I can show you a stop sign. And you say, yeah, that's a stop sign. Points to this, the symbol of stop. It's a, it's a law. But when you get into images like this, it becomes much more complex. 
when I was in Italy, I was fascinated by all the people taking pictures with their cell phones and iPads and everything. And this is the Statue of David. So it's it, it's not just it's you know remember that images are reservoirs of memory. So we have these relationships with things that we're we're taught in school and we know about like Michelangelo and artists. So just to review, this is um, moving past Saussure's signification of just identifying, you know, the thing and then naming the thing. Now we're going to get really into it by saying Persis triad, it begins with the icon, which is a resemblance or an image. Indi the index points towards something else. Smoke indicates fire, a red rose indicates love. And then the symbolic, culturally assigned meanings, a sign that conveys a specific message to a specific group of people. I did this research, on, it was published last year in the journal Visual Communication Quarterly, and I did an analysis of two images from the Iraq War that became iconic. One was this, um, this Marlboro Man smoking guy here, up top by Louis Cinco, LA Times, and then um, very iconic um, to face. It's like the, um, I guess it would be like PTSD, right? The thousand yard stare. And then this other image of um, Abu Ghraib and the release of all these images made by the military, by the per military personnel of these um, prisoners being tortured. So I looked at them. Images like text are condensed interactions. If nothing else, they structure a relationship between the subject of the picture and the viewer. Often they depict patterns of interaction that can resonate outside the frame. Robert Harriman. So going back to that picture of the Marine, this is where culturally have this memory of the um, what is what is masculinity? What did it mean to be tough? Well, it's having a cigarette dangling out of your mouth. So remember that images operate on a conscious and unconscious level of society. We construct and reinforce these, these common social and cultural values. And that's what I have, um, just to kind of help you understand what semiotics is.